are one of the benefits of natural volcanic activity. Japan's many volcanoes make it a global hot spring capital. Known in Japan as onsen, these natural baths have brought physical and spiritual refreshment for centuries. Bathing facilities were built in turbulent times for wounded warriors, and the peace that followed gave birth to onsen tourism. More recently, new onsen-related businesses are taking off across Japan. This time on Japanology Plus, our theme is onsen. We'll explore the irresistible appeal of Japan's hot springs. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Baraka. Japan sits right on the so-called Ring of Fire, the area of volcanic activity surrounding the Pacific Ocean. There are many, many active volcanoes in Japan, and that means that there are also lots of natural hot springs. In fact, every one of Japan's 47 prefectures has several hot springs, which are known in Japanese as onsen. And if you look over here, you'll see that is the source of a hot spring geothermally heated water just bubbling straight up out of the ground and it's quite hot, I can tell you. There are some 28,000 of these hot springs all over Japan and over 3,000 onsen resorts as well. Probably no other country in the world has quite so many and quite such heavily used natural mineral hot springs. Let's take a look at what makes Japan's hot springs unique. Extremely popular with men and women of all ages. Onsen attract around 130 million visitors each year. Japan ranks high among the world's hot spring hot spots. The abundance of onsen is closely tied to Japan's many volcanoes. From northern Hokkaido to southern Kyushu, Japan has around 110 active volcanoes, 7% of the global total. And where there are volcanoes, there are onsen. Rainfall seeps into the ground, dissolving a variety of minerals over time. Wherever this groundwater is heated by magma, you have a potential hot spring. There are two types of onsen. Natural hot springs where water wells out through fissures in the rock and man-made ones where pipes are bored down to carry water to the surface. Onsen water may include various minerals such as sulfur, iron and calcium and the different types of water are thought to improve circulation, ease fatigue or offer other benefits. Since ancient times, the Japanese have recognized the benefits of individual springs and used them to treat all kinds of ailments and injuries. Onsen come in various formats. Some baths are indoors and some outdoors. Outdoor baths, or lotemburo, are especially popular. Often found in scenic mountain or coastal locations, they offer a great sense of being at one with nature as the bather relaxes to the sounds of birdsong and running water. One example of a coastal onsen can be found in the city of Hakodate in southern Hokkaido. It makes ingenious use of natural rock formations. But timing is crucial for bathers at this Rotemburo. At low tide, the pools are too hot. <laughs> but when the tide is high, seawater flows in, mixing with the hot spring water to cool it to a comfortable temperature. Hot spring water isn't always clear. These baths in Kumamoto are completely opaque. 
The mineral-rich mud that clouds the water comes directly from the source. It's known for a strong warming effect and for nourishing the skin. Here's another variant, the sand steam bath. This spa is in Kagoshima. Sand from the beach, warmed by the onsen, is scooped over bathers to cover their bodies. The deep warming effect boosts the body's metabolism. Natural surroundings that refresh the mind, healing mineral waters that soothe the body. For the Japanese, an onsen truly is the ultimate relaxing retreat. I'm in Gunma Prefecture, north of Tokyo, up in the mountains. It's about an altitude of 1,200 meters here. This place is called Kusatsu, and it's one of Japan's big three onsen resorts. It draws about 2.8 million visitors every year, and the water here gushes out from natural hot springs at a rate of about 32,300 liters per minute. The waters here at Kusatsu are famed for their therapeutic qualities. In fact, there's an old saying that the only ailment that they can't heal is a broken heart. And this is where I'm supposed to meet my guest for today, anyway. Here he is. Hello. Hello. I'm Michio Ishikawa. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for being with us today. Michio Ishikawa has visited more than 2,000 onsen all across Japan, researching the properties of their waters, as well as their history and culture. This wellspring, one of many in this onsen resort, is a kusatsu landmark. The sulfurous waters are strongly acidic and emerge at temperatures of more than 50 degrees Celsius, much too hot for bathing. But there's an ingenious system for adjusting the temperature. So these wooden boxes, for want of a better word, what are these for then? These long channels are arranged in seven rows. One purpose is to cool down the scalding hot water that is pumped up from the source over there. The water is cooled by the air. Then it flows to the spa inns and communal baths. Once it's cooled, the water is at the optimal temperature for bathing. That's one function of the system. Another is harvesting mineral salts. As the onsen water flows along the trough, sulfur compounds sink to the bottom. Those mineral salts are then harvested, just like you harvest something from a field. That's why we call this a bath field. The minerals are harvested once or twice a year and made into bath salts. They're very valuable and they're a popular souvenir of kusatsu. Peter, do you know the term yumomi? No, I've never heard that expression. Oh. Yumomi, or water massage, is another way to cool down the scalding 50-degree kusatsu onsen water. It is churned in bathtubs with large paddles. Churning the water over and over lowers the temperature. Experienced stirrers can adjust the water to within one degree of accuracy. As low as 38 degrees, this technique goes back centuries. Nowadays the whole town's built up into a resort. There's hotels and restaurants and everything. How far back does that history go? Back to the 12th century, people were drawn to the area around the present-day bath fields by the superb healing waters. So inns were built for bathers, along with other places to relax. People also needed places to eat. More and more inns and shops appeared around the bath fields, forming this kind of plaza, and it started to look like it does today. I would say Kusatsu is the ultimate prototype for a Japanese onsen resort. Now let's take a tour of a typical Japanese onsen bath.
This is an indoor rock bath. One feature of Japanese onsen is that every inn has its own large spa bath, fed by water from the hot spring. We're lucky in Japan that we can enjoy accommodation and onsen baths under one roof. It's a pretty typical setup, isn't it? Yeah. Come this way. Yep. And here is the Rotenburo. This is my favorite bit. <laughs> Good. Many Rotenburo are rock baths made using large stones. In a Rotenburo, you can enjoy your surroundings. It's one example of a traditional Japanese landscape garden principle called borrowed scenery. I've been in Japan for over 40 years now, and when I first came, I remember at the, the company I worked for, we would sometimes, everybody would go out on a, an onsen trip. There'd be several buses, and you know, everybody would go, over 100 people. And I don't think anybody ever objected to this. Everybody likes onsen. Why do you think they're as popular as they are in Japan? Well, the first reason is the abundance of natural onsen. These days, there are man-made onsen in Tokyo and Osaka. That's a fairly new thing. But there has always been one close by. That's part of why we came to love them. Secondly, there is the connection to Japan's four seasons. Summer is hot and humid. It makes you sweat. A dip in an onsen can be very refreshing. Ah. Then it gets colder, autumn turning into winter. That's the perfect time for an onsen. In the days before heating, a warming onsen soaked away aches and pains. And a third point is that Japanese people love to be clean. Daily bathing is an old custom here. And with these hot springs, the, the custom is communal bathing. You don't have your own bath. Well, sometimes in some hotels they'll have a, uh, an onsen bath actually in the room. But mainly it's, it's communal bathing. That's right. In the old days, communal bathing was the only bathing available. Samurai would put down their swords and enter the bath alongside common folk. People of all stations in life enjoyed bathing together. It was a chance to socialize across class boundaries, a real melting pot, and a social center for all kinds of people in the local community. So it was more than just a place to bathe, it played an important role as a forum for information exchange. I'm taught that bathing warded off disease and ushered in good fortune. At temples, baths were offered to the poor and sick. Gradually, Buddhist monks took to making onsen themselves. In the 16th century, a time of widespread conflict, samurai began to make use of hot springs. Takeda Shingen, a brilliant general of the time, maintained ten secret onsen within his domain. He is said to have sent his soldiers there to recover from sword wounds sustained in battle. The 17th century brought an era of peace, and onsen became more accessible to all. Roads were laid into provinces, and documents and maps dedicated to hot springs began to appear. As more information about their healing powers became known, people began to flock to onsen en masse to cure their ills. Fast forward to the 1960s. As post-war Japan's rapid economic growth brought widespread prosperity, there was also a nationwide boom in leisure travel. This led to the burgeoning success of onsen towns all over Japan. Two-day party packages, including meals and a one-night stay, became a hit. Spa inns invested heavily in big new buildings, and the onsen resort as it exists today was born. For people who are visiting a Japanese hot spring for the first time, I think we should probably just go through some of the basics. Of course. Please have a look at this. The character on this red curtain says onna, or woman. This is the bath for women. And over here, a different colored curtain. This blue one says otoko, that's man. 
It's the men's bath. We'll be going in here. It's blue for guys. Okay. Yes, let's go in. This is where you take off your clothes. You don't wear any clothes in an onsen bath. There are baskets to put your clothes in after you take them off. The only thing you take to the bath is your hand towel, mm -hmm. your flannel. Let's see the proper way to get in the bath. Okay. Someone who lives here in Kusatsu will demonstrate for us. First, you splash some water from the bath on yourself. Start from the feet and work your way up. One reason for that is to remove any dirt. The other reason is that the water is hot. This helps your body become accustomed to the heat before you get in. Oh. Oh. Right. He's wearing a towel now in the interests of television, but normally you wouldn't be. Correct. Today we're making an exception. Once you've splashed water on yourself, slowly step into the water. You want to let your body right. adjust gradually to the heat. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you get in too quickly, it can be something of a shock, I know. It feels great to go in up to your neck, but anyone with a weak heart or high blood pressure should stick to chest height. Now, in Japan, you get into the bath naked, but everyone has a hand towel. So what should you do with that? You shouldn't put the towel in the water because it might not be completely clean. So, you put it on your head. Yeah, that, why is it that people put it on their head, though? Your body is hot from the bath, but your head is cool. That can cause constriction of blood vessels in the brain. One safeguard against that is to soak a towel in hot water and put it on your head. And as the wet towel cools down, it cools your head down too, preventing a rush of blood. Uh, okay. You want to take it easy and enjoy your surroundings. But since the water is so hot, you shouldn't stay in too long. On your first dip, you should get out after five minutes. Then right. take a break. Right. You can always go in again, mm. but don't soak continuously for too long. Because all of this is natural spring water, when you get out of the bath, you should avoid showering. That's because you want all the beneficial onsen minerals to be absorbed by your skin. Well. Hi, I'm Matt Alt, and on today's episode of Japanology Plus One, I've come to a little hot spring town called Nakagawa in Tochigi Prefecture. But I'm not here to get into the water, because in Japan, there's a long tradition of using onsen, hot spring water, for uses other than bathing. For example, take a look here. You can put eggs in an onsen for a long period of time to make soft boiled eggs that are called onsen tamago. And hot spring water is also used in agriculture. For example, they'll use uh, the hot spring water inside of a greenhouse to create steam that makes it easier to grow things like cucumbers, tomatoes. And on that note, the reason we've come here is because there's actually a local business that's using onsen in a really interesting way. It's just down the road a piece, so let's check it out. There's not much to suggest that this is a hot spring facility. Please come in. Wait a second, this, this doesn't look like an onsen. That's right. We're using what used to be a swimming pool. <laughs> and your onsen's full of fish. We use the pool and hot spring water for a special purpose. We farm fugu here. Fugu? Poison blowfish? Fugu is a fish infamous for its poison. In Japan, the dangerous parts are removed so the fish can be eaten. It's considered a delicacy with a price to match. Can, can fugu live in an onsen, though? Not in most onsen water, no. But this water has a salinity of 0.9%, one-third that of seawater, and similar to the fish's own bodies. So it's okay for farming fugu. I can't believe I'm doing this. 
Ah, uh, yeah, it's a little salty, but it's, it's not really salty. Just a little salty. Hmm. This unusual aquaculture operation was established seven years ago to generate employment in a town suffering from depopulation. With the local onsen water deemed fit for marine aquaculture, the next step was to choose a fish. A luxury item was seen as the best way to recoup investment. Matt, uh, I need to get in here and catch some fugu for a shipment. Would you like to help me out? Really? Is it okay? I got a good feeling about this. I got a good feeling about this. So how many fish are in here altogether? There are about 5,000 fish in this pool. 5,000? See if you can catch them. Ah, uh, don't chase them. Ah, uh, too bad. Close. Yes! Yes! Check it out. Two healthy specimens. Well, this sure is fancy. What are we looking at here? This is fugu sashimi, finely sliced raw fish. Please try it. Well, this looks great. Itadakimasu. I hope you like it. Just kidding. No. It's great. It's great. It's really fresh. It doesn't actually have a lot of uh, flavor to it, but I guess it's really about the chewiness and the mouthfeel. So as you can see, onsen aren't just for bathing in Japan. Next time you come to a hot spring town, look around. You never know what you might find. Until then, I'll be enjoying some nice fresh fugu. See you next time. Mm. Mm. At Kasatsu Onsen 2, there are efforts to harness the geothermal waters for uses other than bathing. So where have we come to now? This is a yeah. strange looking place. <laughs> right, it looks like a factory. It's actually a heat exchange system. It takes hot water from the Kusatsu hot spring and cools it to a temperature fit for bathing. Koichi Nakazawa is the official in charge and he's going to show us around. Nice to meet you. Okay, can you explain to me, please, how this heat exchange system works? Kusatsu water wells up at a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. So that makes it much too hot for bathing. <laughs> Not kidding. We exchange heat between the spring water and mains water without mixing the two to bring the hot water down to 54 degrees. And we heat 7 degree mains water to 64 degrees. That provides hot water on tap to homes around the town. So if you live in Kusatsu, you just turn on your hot water tap and hot water immediately comes out. You don't need a boiler or anything. Correct. The hot water generated here is also used for the heating of a welfare center, middle school, and for a heated swimming pool. Meanwhile, the spring water cooled to 54 degrees is supplied to Kasatsu's many inns. It's also a very environmentally sound plant too, isn't it? Thanks to this system, we don't need to use any energy to heat water at home. According to our calculations, it cuts CO2 emissions by 15,000 tonnes per year. Savings on fuel, meanwhile, come to about 680 million yen. Oh, that's pretty impressive, I must say. Oh. That heat exchange system really was very impressive. The whole energy issue these last few years has been a pretty, it's a hot issue in Japan. There's a lot of thinking that has to be done. It seems to me that these hot springs really could probably make quite a big contribution. I believe it is possible to extract more energy from Japan's hot springs. Japan is known to have a lot of geothermal energy resources. 
but a large part of that has always been used for onsen bathing. It's likely that any large-scale development of geothermal power would therefore affect our ability to keep using onsen as we have for so long. It might impact resort communities. So I think the best way to use Japan's geothermal resources will be to apply those resources within each local community, like the heat exchange system in Kusatsu that we looked at just now. That seems to be the most rational approach. The amount of water supplied by an onsen is limited by the local rainfall. What we can use in Kusatsu depends on the rainfall in Kusatsu. So, it's not an inexhaustible resource. These days, Japan really needs to make very careful use of its limited resources, including onsen. Governance of the commons is a big idea right now. Commons are things that belong to everyone. They're resources that are managed and controlled collectively. This is an extremely effective approach to managing resources. In Japan, community baths are an example of local resources that are collectively managed. That model has been used here in Kusatsu for a long time. So, I think that onsen communities have much to teach us about managing limited resources as we consider our ideas for governance of the commons. That's one important lesson we can learn from these communities. I can't think of a better way to close the show, so thank you very much. My pleasure, thank you. Next time, another of our Japanophile profiles. Andrew Mancavelli from New York was so captivated by Japan's traditional armor that he decided to make a career out of it. Your Eye on Asia, NHK World TV.